trip to Kepler 438B. Uh, I don't know what you're thinking. What's Kepler 438B? Well, Kepler 438B is an extra planet that one day might be our last resort. Is it safe, magnificent, broad bathing beach which everyone enjoys? No, no, no. no. Not that kind of resort. Like humanity's last ditch effort to survive. But there's a small problem. It's 470 light years away. That's 470 light years away. That's pretty far! So, that means that even if we were traveling at the speed of light, it would take 470 years to get there. That's inconceivingly, amazingly, incredibly far away. So you can forget about that vacation you were thinking about taking to Kepler 438B. So there has to be other options for us to sustain life, right? Well, what if I told you there is, and it's in our very own solar system? Welcome to 300 Seconds of Science. I'm Adam Bonomo, and we have some very exciting news for the citizens of planet Earth today. There are possible places in our own solar system that have the ability to sustain life. Whoa! I'm talking about the perfect exotic getaway. A beautiful open-air playground, it's yours without charge. I can already imagine it now. Soaking in the 800 degree rays on Mercury, basking in the gross of acidic rain on Venus, enjoying the scenic view of Mars canyons while getting pummeled by solar radiation. Hold on a minute. That all sounds awful. Who would want to go to any of these places? Well, thanks to NASA, a lot of these hindrances can actually be avoided. NASA is actually designing some protection for astronauts to wear to our trip to Mars in the not so distant future. This technology currently in development will make it so that the interplanetary travelers will not have negative impacts from the solar radiation from the sun. There are two ways that we can go about this. We can either add more protective layers or electrostatic or even magnetic force fields. Now that is some sci-fi future science right there. It's headed by force. So now we're talking about Mars and we cannot dismiss that Mars earlier this year was found to have water on it. Please, please, ladies and gentlemen, calm down. We may be able to tap into it and make it so that there is a viable source of water for future Martian colonies. All right, so this is where things get even crazier because not just Mars, but we have a legitimate understanding of trying to start colonizing Venus. Although, I know what you're thinking. But Adam, the surface of Venus is 860 degrees Fahrenheit and the atmospheric pressure alone could crush you like a pop can. Well, you'd be absolutely right. NASA isn't planning to live on the surface of Venus, but rather in its clouds. Their plan is to create solar-powered airships that would float in the upper atmosphere of Venus. At about 30 miles above the surface of Venus, its atmospheric pressure is greatly reduced, closely resembling the troposphere here on Earth. Now, the temperature there would be 17 degrees hotter than we've ever experienced here on Earth. It's still definitely manageable though, and you know, you'll never have to worry about freezing to death. Now, keep in mind, Planets aren't our only viable option here. Because we got moons, mother We have Europa and Ganymede, which are orbiting Jupiter, and we have Enceladus that's orbiting Saturn. Europa is 500 million miles away from the sun, so its surface is just one big layer of ice. Which is definitely not ideal for life, but Europa does have three times the amount of water as Earth. And we obviously need water to sustain human life. Asian well water is available at the many fountains. Ganymede, which is also orbiting Jupiter, is the biggest moon in our solar system, and it is made up of silicate rock and ice. You know, ice, like the water kind. Which brings us to Enceladus. Beautiful, beautiful Enceladus, orbiting Saturn. Now, Enceladus, like Earth, has geysers on it and within those geysers would be an abundance of different elements. Plus, it shows that it's an active celestial body, and whenever you put it like that, it doesn't sound like a big deal. That is water erupting from those geysers, H2O, and many other compound elements. With the accelerating advancements in both science and technology, who knows where we will be in 100 years? Maybe we'll be able to take that vacation on Enceladus. I'm Adam Bonomo, and that's 300 Seconds of Science. So go out, enjoy life, and stay curious.